What's up, gang? Okay, Assalamualaikum uh, and hi everyone. Okay, this is the first video for my YouTube. Yes, for my YouTube. Okay, it is going to be about my uh, individual time uh, assignment. Individual assignment. Uh, I have to make a video of 10 minutes regarding uh, the soil condition uh, in my area. Oh, sorry. Okay, uh, so stay tuned. In Seremban, the city of my hometown, I was born. It is for the subject on geotechnique uh, 2, BFC 34402 uh, for section 9. We were tasked to make a video about uh, the area of soil condition uh, in our place, in our hometown. So my name is Muhammad Ilham bin Lady. This is, a, this is a little bit about me. Uh, metric number DF190107. Currently pursuing Bachelor of Civil Engineering, University Tunus and Malaysia. Okay, next is the contents. Uh, what we will learn today is first uh, there will be a little bit of introduction to geotechnique for some there might be some of you that do not know what this geotechnique is so I'll explain a little bit about that next is uh, the area of soil condition in my hometown the analysis and lastly the conclusion are you kidding me Okay, next. Oh God, stop! Okay, first the introduction. What is geotechnic? Geotechnic is the study of geological material properties that is concerned with rocks and soil. While soil is used as a construction material in various civil engineering projects, and it supports structural foundation. Next is. Geotechnical engineering is also sub-discipline of civil engineering. Involves natural materials found close to the surface of the earth. So basically, it's the crown what we're stepping on every day. Uh, yeah, we see it every day. So this is the study of what we see every day, basically. So, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot about one point. Includes application of the principles of soil mechanics and rock mechanics. What we're going to learn is actually you know the movement of the ground, uh, what is the properties and the uh, capabilities of it to withstand load. So that's basically geotechnical engineering or civil engineering. Yeah. So next is yeah the area of soil condition in Surabaya. Yeah. I got it from Google. Sorry, I skipped it again. Let's go back. Okay. Yes, there is. Uh, Seremban, as you can see, it is blue color. You can see on the indicator uh, on the bottom bottom right corner. You know, it says that it's red, yellow, pastelic soil, reddish brown, electric soil. So we 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 are going to learn. Uh, what about we are going to learn about the pastelic soil and the electric soil in Seremban for today? Pastelic soil. Also spelled potsolid, also called lessive soil, soil usually forming in a portly forest, characterized by moderate leaching, which produces an accumulation of clay and to some degree iron that have been transported, alleviated from another area by water. Potsolid soils may have laterite. Yes, uh, our soil in Sudan have lateritic soils, it was mentioned before. Uh, some may have laterite, a soil layer cemented together by iron in place of the humic horizon or long lead. Next, what about lateritic soil? Lateritic soils are one of the important soils in our widespread in tropical areas and subtropical climates. Lateritic soils are rich in iron and aluminium, aluminium, I'm sorry, low in silica, chemically acidic, and exhibit a soil profile different from that of other soils. The significant features of the lateritic soils are their unique color, poor fertility, and high clay content, and lower cation exchange capacity. So, what we learn from these two types of soil, uh, they have a certain characteristics. So, this analysis is about uh, what we learned. 
the properties, uh, what we can do to improve that certain soil. So what we, what we have here is a different percentage of fines and sand and gravel in left right soils show different engineering character characteristics and behaviors making it difficult to obtain suitable and appropriate gradation of left right soil for specific construction purposes. Yeah, our soil is actually quite difficult. Some left right soils may consist of expensive clay minerals which tend to cause volume changes due to changes in moisture contents leading to cracks and damage on building foundations, pavements, highways or any other construction projects. Some left right soils may consist too much of coarse particles which can cause seepage through dams and hydraulic barriers. The engineering performance of lateritic soils are shown to be controlled by clay sized particles. So we basically uh, what we learn here lateritic soils are uh, affected by the size of clay particles inside. I got a bit more of analysis, so bear with me. Next. Let me bring the points out. Okay. Fine grain soils are commonly mixed to reduce their possibility of shrinkage and swelling. Additives such as cement, lime, bitumen, fry ash, bosonic, and slag have shown to suitably record reduce video volume change. Uh, the additions of these additives not only reduce shrink swelling behavior but also modify other soil properties like shear strength and permeability. So, what is shrink swell? It is the volume change of soil, uh, basically reducing the size or increasing the size. This is dependent on the moisture content of the soil. So what's happening here is a chemically stabilized soil. Uh, there are alternative methods of soil improvement is by mixing fines with coarse grain soils. Uh, next is addition of preferably sand. To a residual soil can lower shrinkage potential of soil material used as soil barrier. Meanwhile, in order to obtain a moderately high permeability and low shrinkage, shrinkage potential, residual soil. Oh my God, so hard to say. Medium sand can be added, can be added, or used as substrates of roads and pavements. As you can see, there's a lot of shrinkage and swelling. So, why do we want to avoid this shrinkage and swelling? Shrinkage and swelling of the crown may affect the building. You know, this is uh, codependent with the shear strength of the soil and the shear strength of the building. So, when the crown moves, but the building is on top of it, it might cause cracks and uh, other higher failure, higher type of failure. So, we would like to avoid that. Next, and lastly, the conclusion. It is important for civil engineers to identify types and properties of soil. Properties such as settlement, shear strength, and moisture content are very important before any construction begins. These properties show the soil ability to withstand loads such as houses. Lastly, engineering modification may be applied to soils to achieve suitable strength. From leisure, <coughs> there are lands where we have uh, the most weak type of soil, which is peat soil. You know? So this peat soil is very weak that it cannot withstand loads. Uh, it produces large settlements. So in this uh, case, we use engineering modification either physically or chemically. Uh, chemically is what you see, what you what we learned before by using fly ash, uh, bitumen, lime to increase the strength. So this is the methods that civil engineers do to achieve uh, the suitable strength for each uh, side uh, for the projects. So I think that should be it. I think I've talked too much. So let's proceed to the ending. Okay. Oh my god. Okay, next. Thank you uh, for watching the video. Uh, possibly like and subscribe. Uh, stay tuned for more videos.